Tom George succeeds in telling an excitedly ambiguous case within a self-deprecating whodunit satire, even when employing the easiest tricks in the manual. Hello and welcome to the Cinema Gold Show. I'm your host, Larry Least. Today we're giving our review of See How They Run. But first, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Pondex, for sponsoring this episode. Check out Pondex today at pondex.com. Use the code Larry21 for 10% off your order. And Audible, are you interested in a free audiobook and 30-day free trial? Head on over to audibletrial.com slash Larry21. The good news is, if you cancel your membership, you can still keep that audiobook forever. And now on to our review of See How They Run. See How you, See How They Run hit theaters on September 16th, 2022. And I recently was just able to watch it. Tom George attempts to balance two films for, throughout See How They Run. One is a snippy spoof comedy that disassembles and lovingly mocks whodunit solved by the likes of Hercule Perot and Sidney Prescott. The other... A deathly serious Agatha Christie mystery worth mentioning alongside Murder on the Orient Express or Identity. Mark Chappell's screenplay aims to meld satire with suspense for the best of both worlds, falling back on rudimentary humor with the biggest winks and pushiest nudges. See how they run won't always keep audience loose on their toes, but benefits from its brisk 90-ish minutes given the surface appeal that can be dryly entertaining with a wry English novelty. The 1950s period dramedy intensifies as Christie's The Mousetrap takes West End ticket holders by storm. And theater impresario Petula Spencer signs a movie deal with producer John Wolfe. Cast and crew celebrate their milestone on the night of The Mousetrap's ceremonious 100th performance until a body is found on stage. In attendance are actors like young Richard Attenborough and talent like screenwriter, screenwriter, excuse me, Irvin Cocker Norris, all of whom become suspects for Inspector Stoppard and Constable Stalker, both played by Sam Rockwell and, mm, apologies for saying her name wrong, Sayoris Ronan. The show must go on, but at what cost of public safety? See how they run fancies itself a cheeky co uh, comedian when it comes to bashing the structure of whodunits. Prominently from Cocker Norse snobby literary pompousness and director Leo Kopernik's boozy American sensibilities. They bicker about quality and sophistication in cinema as Cocker Norris hisses at the thought of flashbacks immediately after a flashback exposition dump. Kopernik might then be ridiculed for his suggested action scene idea, which later becomes a pivotal sequence and see how they run. George approaches spoofing not unlike the unbearable weight of massive talent, wherein char characters mock genre structures before executing the very architectures worth roasting. It's not always, not always an impenetrable method, given how on the nose these gags become, then saved by the charisma of the film's all-star cast. Sam Rockwell's gin-soaked investigator sets a hungover tone that is not mirrored by any supporting castmates. Ronan's eager beaver rookie jumps to every conclusion and gawks at the West End allure of the Mousetrap's ensemble. David Oyelowo argues about artistic integrity as a high-strung wordsmith with auteur egotism. Reese Shearsmith bays in drama as a money-hungry producer. Harris Dickinson charms the dead awake with his leading man's smile. Rockwell's performance grounds suspense while everyone else overplays their characters with tactical intent to ensure anyone remains a suspect. It's odd seeing Rockwell not play Zanier given prior role choices, but not once Ronan's mentee starts pestering her senior officer and Rockwell's allowed to wear his exhaustion outwardly. On with the show goes see how they run. A good-natured commentary about Hollywood practices and parlor mysteries that begin with a dead body. 
George seems inspired by Wes Anderson in vibrant background shot composition, compositions with a zip zappy jazz score that keeps rhythm and when empowering eccentric characters, see how they run is a bit more deflated than Anderson's prize titles. Still, similarities introduce acceptable quirk into a whodunit that thinks itself brighter than its obvious spoof targets, or something like Cabin in the Woods laces meta zingers into a possibly clever original story. See how they run, pokes fun at low hanging corpses and procedural motions that re revel in theater goer expectations. Production designer Amanda MacArthur deserves recognition because See How They Run boasts an exceptional presence. From the sizzling red neon signs flashing the mousetrap above theater entryways, to bottles everywhere sweet at the Savoy Hotel. Cinematographer Jamie Ramsey has period richness to highlight. Painted show posters pop behind Stalker as she stands enamored by her entertainment surroundings, while Christie's mansion fights snowy chilliness with warmer fireplace views. Even Stopard's miniature sky blue automobile adds an immersive touch. As everything about the unfolding case remains pleasantly picturesque to the eyes. So now we get to my verdict. See how they run doesn't re rewrite Agatha Christie's greatest hits. It's more scribbling jokes in the margins worth of future readers' chuckles. The cast is aces, material, relatively engaging, and the land London uh, landscape is to die for. Tom George succeeds in telling an excitedly ambiguous case within a self-deprecating whodunit satire, even when employing the easiest tricks in the manual. Sometimes you can get by on star power and old school Hollywood fantasies, which see how they run uses to excuse itself from winking a bit too hard at the audience before stepping over its own prideful sense of humor. So finally, I'm gonna leave this with a seven out of 10 score. I feel like they could have extended it a bit without going too dry, I guess. But that is our review. Let us know in the comment section below. If you've watched it, what do you think of the movie? Give us your rating. As always, if you want to support the show, go ahead and buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash cinemagold. Your support helps the channel grow, upgrade our equipment, bring in new hosts, be able to pay them, pay our writers, and eventually take this show on the road. Your support can help make that a reality. And as always, thank you so much for watching and listening. We will see you next time.